for the longest time, there wasn't any way to sync a lead form with organic LinkedIn posts. Well, recently that all changed. When you're boosting a post, there's now a lead gen focus objective where you can start syncing forms with your posts. Now I will admit, once you start boosting posts, it's no longer organic. It is flat out an ad. So we'll walk through this particular setup, still show you what you can and cannot do, especially when you need to go back into the campaign and make any edits, because the process is a little different. So let's begin. I know it's odd to be starting one of our Pay Media Pros videos from a LinkedIn company page, but that's exactly where we need to be. Now, when we're talking about boosting a post from your LinkedIn page, you need to make sure you have the proper access. So in order to boost a post, you have to be a super admin or a content admin to the LinkedIn page in order to boost. LinkedIn says, if you're only a sponsored content poster, then you'll have to go through campaign manager to sponsor page posts. But let's say you have the two access levels needed. You can see we're on the main feed section for the company page. This is the view when you're logged in. And within this first post that we have here, there is a boost button. And there are some limitations on which types of posts can be boosted. At the time of this video, LinkedIn states that you can only boost posts that are using only text, single images, videos, documents, events, or LinkedIn articles. Now we just made a video about sponsored LinkedIn articles. It's kind of a similar process. You can check out that video here. But we're talking about adding a lead form to an organic post that you are going to boost. LinkedIn also states that any post that has been boosted in the past cannot be boosted again but the post can be edited and then you'll have to run through the whole ad review process again. But odds are these posts are more timely. They're going to have shorter runs with specific end dates. So now I'm just going to click on this boost button. And there's one thing I know you can't see the tab of my Chrome browser, but we went from the LinkedIn page to LinkedIn campaign manager. So while we're doing it from the page, LinkedIn is essentially creating a new LinkedIn campaign for us. So the whole point of this video is to learn how to attach a lead form to the organic post that you're boosting. And in order to do that, we have to choose a specific campaign objective. And here we see the newest option, get more leads. Then if we go up, we could choose what type of audience we would want. Profile based, interest based, you can use certain audiences, or if you have a collection of saved audiences already within your ad account, you can choose one of those too. We have a video about saved audiences, you can watch that one here. I'm not going to run through all the targeting options in LinkedIn. Odds are if you're pretty active within LinkedIn, you're already familiar with what the targeting options are. But here you can update your locations. So go ahead and choose all the options that you want. I know I'm just sticking with just the United States. Of course, you're going to make it more specific. Just like normal lead gen campaigns, you cannot select the audience network. LinkedIn's lead forms only live on LinkedIn's native platform. One thing I do love is that yes, you can select the automatic audience expansion. I am never going to do this, but notice our leads right now with the box unchecked, 34 to 140. When we click on the box to include audience expansion, notice how much our leads drop. So LinkedIn wants us to use this for a lead gen objective, and even they know our leads are definitely going to drop. So why would we ever use this for a lead gen campaign? I don't care if it's boosted or not. Makes no sense. Never check this box. Okay, but we want leads. Here's a little bit more about the lead form. And we're gonna get a deeper look about what the form actually looks like a little bit later on. So the button label cannot be customized. You have to choose one of the options here. It's gonna stick with learn more. And then LinkedIn wants you to choose what information you're going to collect from the user. Their personal email, which will be the easiest to collect. Most people are going to sign up for LinkedIn with their personal email. So this will be easier to auto-populate within the form and collect their information. However, if you're looking for quality, and you want to validate with a work email, that is an option too. Privacy policy for a lead form is mandatory. Let me just go grab ours. There you go, paste it in there. Next, choose your ad schedule. I'm just gonna choose an end date. And from playing around with this earlier, the minimum you could set is $10 a day. Just be aware of that. And then you have to choose the ad account to bill. You're not being billed through your LinkedIn company page. You'll have to choose your ad account. We only have the one, but we understand there are many companies out there who have several ad accounts. Just choose which one that's going to be. Because when we go ahead and click boost, I wanna go back and manage and review the ad. It's gonna pop up another window within the same campaign manager. We see that from this boosted post, a new campaign was created in the ad account. For now, I'm gonna go click edit. Here's where you can go ahead and change the name to make it look a lot better than this. If I scroll down a little bit more, 
If you prefer this user experience, you can go ahead and change your targeting to be whatever it wants. If you don't like how it looked within the boosted post one, go ahead and update it to whatever you need it to be. Still scrolling down. Notice you can't change the ad format. We already picked an organic post. You can't change it to be something different than what the original post was. Still scrolling down. Of course, you can always change your budget. Go ahead and change your bid for boosted post. Most likely I'm gonna change it back to manual. Add in any additional conversion tracking if you like, but I wanna look at the ads. If you wanna test out multiple boosted posts to the same audience, you can. Start looking at other existing content that you have. But now I wanna get a good look at this ad. I'm gonna click on these three dots right here and then choose view. This was the post that we had. Yes, it's an old one. But here is the learn more. This was the call to action button that I chose when building the boosted post campaign. There's the work email option instead of the personal email option. And then notice that there are other fields as well as this checkbox down below. And you probably realize that this section down here besides the email was not included in the setup for the boosted post campaign. And you are right. So then you may be asking, can we edit the form for these boosted posts? And my answer to you is, well, kind of. I'm gonna head back out here and go to the main campaign manager. And to view your forms, we need to go down to these three shapes, which represent the assets section. Open it up and we want lead gen forms. It's easy enough since this is the only form we have in this account. You can go to the three dots again, go to edit. I understand there's certain things I can't change because the form is still under review. But right away, there are things that we can change, like the headline. This is the default copy that LinkedIn is going to use. Does not seem appealing at all. I can easily see this scaring someone away. Additional details, now you see where they would add up in the form, are not included at all. So go ahead and add some additional value statements to these forms to make it more appealing. Give the user a reason why they should fill out the form, give their information, when they're already looking at one of your boosted posts for free. There's a privacy policy if you need to update and any terms and conditions. So now let's go into the actual details and questions. And I'm also gonna go down in the preview too. If I go up, I am clicking on the last name field. I'm gonna click on the X for the job title too. And they're not being removed. As I briefly mentioned earlier, this is happening because the form is still under review. If you jump in quickly after creating the campaign, just like I am, you probably won't be able to edit certain things. But if you wait until the approval, you will be able to edit the profile information fields. Notice on the screen, we're using five out of 12. So there are some options. Same thing for the checkbox message, which is grayed out. It's grayed out because the form is under review. You will be able to uncheck the required box if you don't want to force the user to review the checkbox message. Now the first four are really going to be pulled from the user's LinkedIn profile. A lot of this stuff is going to be auto-populated. Work email is going to be different. If we selected personal email, odds are that would have been in there too. If the user has their work email filled in within their profile, yes, that'll also be auto-populated. But you do have the option to validate the work email. This will reject anyone trying to fill out the form with Gmail, Yahoo, AOL, whatever, and it could make the user work a little bit more to fill out the form. And we all know what happens in lead gen if we make the user work a little bit more, you can expect less leads. However, you should expect that the quality of those leads will also be better. And then scrolling down to confirmation, this is one thing I laugh at. This is the default message. You can see it better in the preview over here. Please update this, because I laugh that it says you can go to the company website, but it's really the LinkedIn company page as the landing page URL. So it's really not your company website, unless your LinkedIn company page really is your only website. But go ahead, change it to whatever you want it to be, send them to another article, have them watch a video, maybe give them a free download, whatever you want the offer to be, but also reflect it within the form details up top. So you're giving the user the right expectations of what they're going to get once they fill out the form. I'm not gonna save any of this, I'm just gonna cancel. And then we can head back to advertise and go back within the campaign. There is one thing I did wanna point out about the ad that I chose to boost for this campaign example, is that in this case, notice that this specific boosted post has a link to it already and a user can still click on it and go to the link's destination URL. Understand that the form that you include in your organic post is not any sort of gate, similar to like we can do with the document ads. A user can still click on the link and click on the learn more button while they're engaging with this boosted post. So think of these lead forms on an organic post as just an additional attempt to capture first party information. Make it complementary to the post that you're boosting. So if I actually chose to run this as a boosted post, this link goes to our lead gen course. I would not use this form below to try to capture their information and then send them to the lead gen class. 
That makes no sense at all. Maybe I would have a form down below just to have them sign up for our newsletter, have them get a taste of the type of information that we provide or share with the community before they want to decide to sign up for the course. If you want to boost a blog post or any of the thought leadership that you want to promote, maybe complement it with more articles or a download, something that makes sense in terms of what you're posting. The form that we're attaching to this boosted post will not restrict anything that was originally included in your organic post. But that's how easy it is to attach a lead form to boosted posts. It's really just choosing a different campaign objective throughout the boosted post process. So if you have any additional questions on how to boost any content within LinkedIn ads or how to utilize lead gen forms on LinkedIn, we're happy to help. So leave any questions in the comment section. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.